Today, I have a big responsibility. That responsibility is to ensure that this magical number here of 122 pounds 39p doesn't get any lower. In our last episode, we managed to make a profit of 89 pounds and 68, and I'm determined today to continue the winning streak. Starting with our first item of the day, I paid a grand total of 63 pounds for this device. Let's get it open and see what we're dealing with. Dun, 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 dun. It's a Nintendo Switch. Condition wise, we are missing the analog stick from here. It comes with the Joy-Cons as well, which is gonna really help if I go to sell this unit, it will just bump up the profit, as long as, obviously, I can actually fix it, because that would be an issue if I can't. We are missing the rear kickstand here, but I have plenty of those, so that's replaceable, no problem at all. What's the state of the screen? Not too bad, you know, there's not many scratches from what I can see. It just seems to be smudge marks, and some of that is gonna be from my gloves as well. So, not looking too shabby. Take these off. The listing actually states that this Nintendo Switch just has no power. There's nothing more than that. We don't know the status of the Joy-Cons because the Switch doesn't work. So let's inspect it and see what's going on. Now I also know what a lot of you are gonna be thinking is, but Joey, how, how are you gonna open this Nintendo Switch? Well, my friends, we have recently made another upgrade. Let me present you with my new iFixit Pro Tech toolkit. For the devices that I work on, whether it be big or small, Xboxes, Nintendo Switches, phones, tablets, this kit is going to have me covered for a very, very long time. Along with this upgrade, I want you all to help me give the biggest, warmest welcome to our latest sponsor, iFixit. Whether you're a tech savvy individual or DIY enthusiast, iFixit has the solution for you. iFixit fix kits provide a comprehensive repair solution by including all the necessary tools specifically designed for each repair. The tools and guides provided are designed to make the repairs as easy and as risk-free as possible, giving you a safe, reliable and enjoyable repair experience. Check out their diverse range of smartphone repair kits available from Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy to OnePlus and Fairphone. iFixit will have you covered. Use the link in the description below and bring your device back to life. Let's get this switch taken apart. It's hard to say at this point whether this has been opened or not just yet. First signs are that we're actually looking pretty clean to be honest with you. I'm going to check out the charging port because I've not looked at that yet. Let's head on over to the scope. My diagnostic theory today is all over the place. I don't know why I didn't check this to begin with. Oh okay, yeah, nice. All right, so it's definitely going to need a new charging port. All of those pins there crossed over. Look at that. They're all hugging each other. Wow, that has most probably caused some damage to M92T36, so we will check that with our multimeter. But maybe we got lucky, and it might just be a port swap. Multimeter probes in hand. I've got the board out of the chassis now, so multimeter is in continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a complete circuit. It was a little bit far away there, so we have the M92T36 chip here. Do we have any issues with that? We do, look at that. So this cap here, which also links to the P13 IC on the back of the board, is shorted to ground. I'm just gonna check the others. Okay, that's fine. And that's okay as well. So this cap here. Let's turn the board over. And what we should be able to see is that this cap is also shorted. Which as you can hear, it is. Now I've had situations before where you remove P13 and you still have the short. Then you go ahead and remove M92T36 and you still have a short on this cap. So I don't know whether, I don't know what to remove first. I don't know whether to remove M92T36 or P13 USB. I don't know which one to take. I'm going to hazard a guess and say M92T36. It's a 50-50, right? So let's get this off the board. Let's check and see if our short's gone. No, it's not, so we still have our short. So if we turn it round, again, we're still gonna have it on this cap on the back. So let's take off P13. You know what, I've actually made a mistake. Before I go ahead and take off P13, I should have taken the port off first. I don't know why I haven't done that. I think my head's a little bit cloudy today. It happens to the best of us, but the pins on this port are crossed over. So maybe that's conflicting the information that we have on a short on this cap. Now I'll take off this port and see if our results vary. Has that changed anything? No, it hasn't. Okay, so we still have a short on that cap. So let's remove P13. Has our ye old short gone now? So I think this side is ground. This side isn't, there we go. Okay, so it was the P13 chip, just then making sure that we don't have any shorts on any of these capacitors around the BQIC, which is the charging IC. We don't, that's all good. Let's check our little fuse as well. That's all good. I'm actually gonna just put M92T36 back on then and see if that works. Obviously just to minimize our losses, I don't wanna go ahead and fork out another five pound for a new chip if the old one does work. So we'll give it a go. And we'll also put a new P13 IC on.
Right, multimeter in continuity mode, the port is looking A-OK, -okay. that's good stuff. We hopefully don't have a short on this cap. Nope, no short on this cap, fine. I wasn't happy with how P13 looked originally, so I went over it again just to double check and make sure. M92T36 was put back on as well, so I'm just going to test and make sure that we don't have any new shorts that we didn't have before. No, that's fine as well. And with the new port, as always, I soldered these back pins here, but you can see that we have a really good strong hold on all of the anchoring points. And I'm now hoping that this is gonna be enough to at least get this switch on and working. What I will do, because we had a bad P13 USB, I think it would be wise to check the filters before we go ahead and reassemble. Because I don't wanna have to put it all back together and then the final test for the docking station we put it in and it doesn't work, that wouldn't be ideal, would it? We are looking for a continuous path through the filters but not diagonally. So that, for example, is fine. All filters are checking out okay. So I'll put this back together and hopefully we have ourselves our first fix. Wish me luck. The switch is back together and it's come out, not, I wouldn't say like new, you know, it still looks a little bit used, but I've given it a nice clean and it does have a really nice shiny finish, as well as the fact that even the back looks quite nice. Again, I've not put this back yet because I don't even know if it works. Let's go ahead and put it in the ammeter now in three, Two, one. We get something on the amp meter, what is that? Yep, yeah, good. Oh, it had a full battery. So the amp meter's restarted, which means that the switch should be turned on, which it is. Get in, that's the result. Oh, it's got literally 99% full charge. So if I take this out now, it's charging at 340 milliamps, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that, yeah, the battery's full. So that P13 chip that went bad, ultimately stopped the device from turning on. So this actually had a full charge when the tragedy of the port happened. I don't know if you can hear, but I, I do have a one-year-old and she is babbling currently in the background and I wouldn't change it for the world. And if we turn the switch around, do we get a charge on this side as well? Yes, we do. Perfect, all right. So, all thumbs up from a charging standpoint. Does it work? Does it read games? Does it connect to Wi-Fi, etc., etc.? Does it also work on the docking station? I'd actually say that the docking station part is probably the one that I'm most scared about. So, into the dock it goes. I do get a green light, which is good. Do we get anything on our game scene? The green light has turned off, so I'm just taking it out and putting it back in. All right, solid green light. Anything on the game scene? There we go, okay, sweet. So it works on a docking station as well. The Switch doesn't have parental lock, which is really, really good. It did come with these Joy-Cons. Let's see if the Joy-Cons actually dock and work. Oh, that one doesn't. Does this one? That one does, okay, so that says paired, but we get nothing with this Joy-Con. Now actually, is that going to be the rail, or is that the Joy-Con itself, which is busted? Known good working pair of Joy-Cons going in, so that one's fine. And then the one on the right, was it the Joy-Con? Ah, yeah, it was a Joy-Con. Okay, so yeah, these Joy-Cons are absolutely fine. No loose rails or anything, I'm shaking it about, it's not disconnecting. Let's check and see that the Joy-Cons actually charge, which they do. Both of them are charging. Result, does the game work? Yes, it does, perfect. Will it connect to the internet is the question? Yes, it will, perfect. I'm actually now gonna put this to one side and just quickly focus on why this Joy-Con isn't connected. To be honest with you, I don't know if it's worth the time saving because this RB isn't working. Uh, we have clearly some screws missing because of the, the bit down here is opened, as well as the fact it's definitely gonna need a Joy-Con. But I am also intrigued as to why it's not working. I've quite literally only just taken out the screws and pulled this apart, and I think I know why it's not working, because these ribbon cables aren't attached to the board. 
and I've also found the R spring here, which is why it wasn't clicking. With all that in mind, I'm just gonna put this back together, I guess, and quickly change out this and see if we can get it working. As I was getting a bit further down with the switch controller, or should I say Joy-Con, sorry, I found another ribbon cable that wasn't connected, as well as the fact that the button for RB is actually off. <laughs> it's, it's been pulled off somehow. And I think the, I don't think they're, so, they're soldered on those pads. No, there isn't. So these pads have been ripped off here. There's obviously solder on this one. So actually trace repair would be needed on these two. And I don't have these buttons in stock. So I don't think it's really worth my time doing this. I'll keep it as like a, a little project I can do on my own. But in terms of uh, profit, there's literally no point in doing this right now. Unless I've got a faulty Joy-Con. Let me double check and see if I've got a faulty one. No, I don't have a faulty one to take the connector off and put it onto this one. I'll get some of these buttons ordered. And like I said, maybe I'll do it on a live stream at some point. So I can sell the Nintendo Switch on its own. We'll make a profit with that. But I won't include profit from the Joy-Cons because I'm not going to sell those Joy-Cons, obviously. Let's move on to our second item. Now, this one wasn't actually included in the thumbnail. Being honest, I didn't think I'd have time to work on two things today, but good news is that we have a PlayStation 5 to work on. Now, with this one, I'm gonna go in blind, so I don't know what the reason is why it's not working. I know that I paid 200 pounds for the console, and it does say on top of the console, power on with display. So surely, this just works. Is that a thing? If that's what the fault is with this, there is no fault. It has got some sort of a skew. So I don't know if this is part of a uh, of a job lot or something. But condition-wise, honestly, this PS5 is in good condition. I mean, even the state of the faceplate at the front, there's no scratches or anything. It's really, really nice. So without me jabbering on any further, I'm going to balance this on my chin, on my fat neck. And I'm going to see if it powers on, if I can find the power lead. Found it. Right, so we get a crackle. Does it power on? Okay. Oh, okay. It makes... It is. I mean, it's on. We have the blue light. Does it go to a white light? Do we get a display? If we do, I'm probably going to have to go to the listing and see what's wrong with this. It's a... Yeah, it's a white light. We have a white light. Good. Now, being honest, the port feels okay. I'm just... I can't show you on the uh, Elgato game scene. So, I've just put my HDMI cable in for a normal monitor. But I'm not getting a display. Oh, I am getting a display. I'll just turn off HDCP. Does it... Show on who's... It does, like, what... What's going on? It's been factory reset as well. There's no way I get a disc, right? No, okay, I thought it was gonna to be too good to be true. I do have Far Cry 6, so I'm gonna load that up and just make sure that the disc drive actually works. Does it pick it up? I mean, it's got the little disc icon at the top of the screen, it's reading. Did I put the disc in the wrong way? Sounds like a Joey thing to do. So the disk drive isn't working. I've just put a PS4 game in, and I want to see if that does anything. It sounds like it's doing the exact same thing, which is just like a beep, and then nothing. It doesn't eject the disk or anything like that. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna check the listing and see why I actually bought this one. I can't remember buying one that had a faulty drive. Right, so I found it. It says, starts to overheat after under operation for a period of time. Good, one corner has a tiny dent and a minor scratch. And this is definitely the same one. So I've bought it for overheating, but it looks like the disk drive doesn't work. Also, it does also say due to the condition of the device, we have not fully tested or diagnosed the faults. We do not know how these faults have occurred. Therefore, the device is being listed for parts. So I'll try and resolve the issue that we have with the disk drive first. And then once I've confirmed that's all good, I'll take it apart and give it a nice clean. It could just be that there's a small bit of liquid metal missing from the die, which is causing the PlayStation to overheat, but we'll check and confirm. The good sign here is that it's never been open before. We have the warranty sticker, that's a result. However, Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to try and put this at an angle that you can see, but there is in fact liquid down here. So that would make sense as to why the drive potentially isn't working. Let's use our T8 on the iFixit screwdriver set. How bad is this then? So if we disconnect this cable here, I'm also going to take it off of the disk drive side. We can see the damage. Well, this is rust now, so it must have been here for quite a while. Doesn't seem to be any other signs of liquid, not even on the actual board itself. I'm hoping this has damaged the mechanical side of the drive rather than the actual motherboard. Good thing is that it doesn't look like there's any damage to the main board either, which is nice. Let's get this taken apart. So here's the actual PCB, and other than, I mean, we've got a little bit there and there, but this side looks relatively clean, and this is the side where all the components are. If I turn the board over, we have corrosion right here, but there's no components. So it goes to some through holes, just here, but on the other side directly to those through holes is this cap. So I don't know whether maybe these caps have been affected. So I'm just gonna measure some bits with the uh, with the multimeter and see what's going on. And also give it a, a little bit of a clean now that I know where the liquid damage is.
I've given it a little bit of a clean now. I just had a poke around. I can't see any capacitors or anything that's showing as shorted. So I'm going to go under the scope to see if there's anything that I've missed. Essentially, this is just a backup recording because I can't remember if I hit record or not with the other one. But everything looks pretty clean on this board. This is where I cleared up the corrosion that we had. Uh, where's that exact bit? Just about here. So you can see where it's corroded the writing and stuff, but it wouldn't have gone through these through holes. The only ones it could have potentially gone through are these ones but I'm getting full readings on both of these pads that I should compared with another one. The only other thing that I said was there was a tiny bit of corrosion just on here on the plastic, but I've got rid of where that was. Again, it wasn't even inside the connector, it was just up here. But what that does lead me to think is actually, do we have, what about, what about the ribbon cables on here? Which one's that? Is it this one? It is, isn't it? Ah, here we go, hold on. What's that? Is that just a damaged ribbon cable then? Are we blocking some sort of connection? If I just put some IPA on there, give it a clean. Does that come off or is that almost stained? That's almost like stained. I don't know if that's gonna be the cause of our issues. It's not as obvious as what it was before. Do I just give that a go? I'll plug it all back in and see if that's helped at all. So this is on that same drive and I think I found the issue. This is on the inside of that drive, look at that. So that's the good news is that it's this itself, the actual disk drive. So it means I don't have to swap any chips or anything like that. I should just be able to replace the drive. Obviously I'm not gonna try with this now because I don't wanna cause any further damage, but it looks like liquid has gone through here on this chassis, straight down into there. Wow. Right, as you can see from this absolute mess, I've been struggling. I'm gonna try my best to explain what's happened and what I've done without boring you, or at least trying not to bore you anyway. This, what I have in my hands, is the original laser deck, which reads the discs for the PS5 that we have in question. I'll show you that under the scope in a minute, but it is corroded everywhere like really 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 bad so at first i just swapped out a disk drive and kept the daughter board which is this little thing here exactly the same just with a new disk drive and unfortunately i would get the exact same thing again i tried simply just putting a disk in i did also try both sides just to make sure that i wasn't being an idiot i thought maybe there is a chance then that that disk drive is faulty. I've tried different combinations of just lasers different housings rollers motors pretty much every single combination you can imagine, and I still get the same thing. I've also tried three different discs, PS4, PS5, and DVD, just to write them off. They're all really good condition as well, but if I show you, just so you can visually see when I go to put the disc in. So disc goes in fine, clicks, all sounds good. I get two spins from what I can hear, and then it doesn't end up spinning the disc, but the laser deck just keeps going back and forth about three times, does that over and over again, and eventually it pops up and says unrecognizable disc or unreadable disc. So it should pop up, there we go, unreadable disc. So I have no idea what's going on. If it's not the actual physical disc drive itself, it must be that daughter board. There must have been some damage to it somehow, which is causing it to not properly communicate with the main motherboard. Now, I've updated the console, and the update went through just fine over the internet. So if it wasn't the correct disk drive, it also hasn't been opened before because of the warranty sticker, it wouldn't let me update it. I then thought maybe I'll just reset the console and go through updates again, reset it fully, signed into PSN, all okay, exactly the same issue. So the daughter board is definitely the correct board for the main PCB, but for whatever reason, it's almost like there's a data issue and it's a communication thing, not between the main board and the daughter board, but more so the daughter board and the actual disk drive itself. And because I've changed out pretty much every single ribbon cable that you can imagine every single time, there's one common problem here, and that is the disk daughter board. I also think that that's probably what they meant by overheating. Let me show you the old disk drive, the original one that goes with this. And it might make a bit more sense as to why I think that the actual daughter board itself might have further issues. This is the laser deck for the original one. Uh, and you can see that there's plenty of rust all down here and everywhere on the board is just corroded. This is the actual laser itself, and you can see, look down the side of the laser, look at all that rust and grime and liquid. So I do genuinely think this has caused bigger problems. All of the damage you can see here, all the water damage, the corrosion. If I turn it onto the other side, again, that's the back of that PCB. So as far as I'm aware, this is the only PCB on the laser deck, and it's not worth me trying to fix this laser deck. Like, there's just no hope in hell that I'll be able to fix this. It's way too far gone. This is the laser deck side of that ribbon cable, and what I'm assuming is that this has got so badly damaged, it's traveled through all the way to the other end, which, as you know, we did attempt to clean. Uh, we had the marks over here. And I think what it's done, perhaps, is messed up the connector on the daughter board, 
uh, the PCB that goes with the disk drive. I think that's what's caused further damage here. As you can see, this is not a pretty sight. And just for reference, this is what the good laser deck that I was using looks like. Absolutely spotless. So yeah, that's a bummer, really. So I think that the unfortunate plan of action is to give this PS5 a clean internally. So I'll take off the metal IO shield and just make sure that the liquid metal has been spread correctly. I think the overheating issues is due to somebody was playing a uh, PS5 game with the disc in and maybe it just kept cutting out and the console kept turning off because of the state of the drive, almost like into a protection mode. I don't think it had anything to do with the heating. And because obviously the console can somewhat communicate with the drive to go through updates and stuff, it works fine as a digital edition console. So although we won't be making a bigger profit because it's a disc version, I'll still be able to make some profit uh, and sell it as a digital version instead. Unless by the time people have actually seen this video, someone might have a solution for the problem that I'm facing. Let me give it a clean on the inside. Probably point out that the liquid metal situation is absolutely fine. I genuinely believe this PlayStation was overheating because of the status of the disc drive and somebody was actually playing a disc game rather than digital. I'll get this cleaned up though. Always best to double check. The PlayStation has been fully reset. I've logged in, I've downloaded the game, I've played it. It seems to be absolutely fine, but I need to give it some more thorough testing to ensure that it isn't, it doesn't have an overheating problem, which means I'll have to leave it on overnight and maybe over the next few days, give it some game time. Bit disappointed because I really thought I was gonna be able to fix that and a little bit disappointed with the Nintendo Switch and the Joy-Con controller as well, but the actual Nintendo Switch itself as a whole is fine, so I'm happy with that. Heading over then to Sally's spectacular spreadsheet, we have a total cost of 263 pounds. The parts is only gonna be the P13 USB chip that we used on the Nintendo Switch. I valued that at around about two pounds. The Nintendo Switch on its own, just the handheld console, will be 100 pounds I'll be able to get for it. And with the PS5, although it doesn't obviously work with the disc, it will go as a digital edition console. The, it updates fine. And like I said, as long as the overheating issue isn't a thing, I should be able to get a good price for it. Digital PS5s go for anywhere between 250 to 300 pounds. I'll lowball this because what I'm gonna put in the description is exactly what I've done with this. And I'll go with 200 160. So 260 plus 100 is 360 pounds. That gives us a total profit for today's video of 70 pounds and 16 pence. Adding that into our total spreadsheet, 70 pounds and 16 pence gives us a grand total profit currently, I have to caveat with currently, of 192 pounds and 55 pence. P. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in any of the iFixit kits, again, please use the link down below in the description. I'll leave a link here to the last episode of this series. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.